a climate conference was held at Scattergood Friends School and Farm on the weekend of November 2nd and 3rd, 2013. The conference was sponsored by Iowa Yearly Meeting Conservative. On Saturday, a panel of speakers discussed climate issues. The panel was led by Jose Aguto, the Friends Committee on National Legislation's Legislative Secretary for Sustainable Energy and the Environment. Other speakers included Susan Guy, the Director of the Iowa Interfaith Power and Light, Rob Hogue, an Iowa State Senator, David Osterberg, founding member and former director of the Iowa Policy Project, Mark Cree, Scattergood Farm Manager, and Steve Shivers of Des Moines Chapter of the Citizens Climate Lobby. On Sunday, November 3rd, an Earth Walk was held where students and staff and participants from the conference walked from Scattergood Friends School and Farm into Iowa City. Head of school Christine Ashley said, The Sunday Earth Walk was our way of, of putting our faith into action, and the cleanup and petitioning on the Ped Mall were part of the weekend of events. The 14 and a half miles included two conference participants, eight students, and four staff. Some of the Scarigood student walkers have done the walk in the past. Another walker, Rick Driver, walked in the Great Peace Walk for Global Nuclear Disarmament in 1968, which actually made a stop at Scattergood on the trek across the United States. His wife, Janet Koster, walked across Russia in support of nuclear disarmament. Miriam, who is 70 years young, will be walking in the Great March for Climate Action next year as people walk across the United States to heighten awareness of climate problems. Don Laughlin wrote, Rick Driver and wife Janet are good friends of mine. They have both been active in I Renew in past years. The Great Peace Walk of 1968 also made a stop at our place in Springdale for refreshment and water. I remember that some of the Russians had a hard time getting used to the fact that the water hydrant was not a pump. They kept raising it up and down instead of just up. Our two oldest granddaughters, Dave's daughters, <clears throat> were visiting at the time and walked from our place to Scattergood with them. When I shared these photos with the Quaker Earth Care Witness Listserv, they had a number of questions, mainly dealing with how accurately the signs carried during the walk reflected the views of the yearly meeting. In response, I wrote the following. In terms of interaction with the yearly meeting, the school is the primary focus of the work of Iowa Yearly Meeting Conservative and the school is a faithful expression of us. We appreciate so many things about the school, one of the primary being a living laboratory of sustainable practices. The climate conference was the work of the yearly meeting and the school working closely and hard together with help from Friends Committee on National Legislation. <clears throat> Years ago, Marshall Massey included working with FCNL on environmental issues in a list of recommendations to the yearly meeting, and a number of us have done and are doing that. We created an Earth Care subcommittee of our Peace and Social Concerns Committee in order to give these issues more attention. Years ago, the yearly meeting approved a minute urging friends to give up or drastically reduce the use of cars, which is challenging with many rural members, but we have a heightened awareness and several members living without cars. On the Earth Walk this week, one reaction was joyful honking and waving as one car carrying at least three members of the West Branch meeting drove past on their way to meeting for worship. One of the passengers lives in a house he and his son designed and built that has an annual electric bill of about $300 in Iowa winters, no less. This summer, the yearly meeting sent a letter to Governor Branstad 
urging funding to expand passenger rail service in Iowa. And the yearly meeting approved a minute opposing the practices of tar sands extraction and fracking. Several members have signed the Keystone Pledge of Resistance and one is an action leader in that campaign. As you walk, first can you introduce who you are and if you could respond to the question, as you're walking today, what is coming up in your head in terms of uh, your past walks and the necessity of continuing this kind of action today? I'll just give that to you. Okay. Uh, name is Rick Driver. I live in Iowa City. I'm 58 years old. I married uh, Janet Coaster, who's walking in front of me. In 1986, first time I was at Scattergood, I had walked here from Los Angeles as part of the Great Peace March for Global Nuclear Disarmament. You can actually call up a picture of all the vehicles in front of the school on the internet. Uh, the first Earth Day in, I don't know, early 70s sometime, late 60s, I can't remember at this point. I think so, yeah. I got involved in that, but there were actually, in, at our school, there were things about pollution, overpopulation. From a really early age, I became aware that there are problems in the world that most people are just not looking at and not addressing, that are much easier to handle if they're addressed consciously and as early as possible. At the time, it was overpopulation. In 1986, it was the... The, the potential of global nuclear destruction because jointly between the US and Russia we had enough nuclear weapons pointed at each other ready to pull the trigger to destroy all of life on earth many times over a hundredth of the arsenal would have sufficed so our, our thought then was how can we prevent people from considering that nuclear war was a viable option to even consider. Every, every new uh, advance in technology is supposed to make war unthinkable. Uh, Alfred Nobel with dynamite, he was shamed into thinking that the world would, would remember him as being the person who invented dynamite and made war horrible and killed millions of people. So he started Somebody has to check me on this. This is <laughs> check on the internet to see if this is actually the true story. But he started the Nobel Prize so that his legacy would be one that's positive. So he used his millions or whatever of dollars to do something positive in the world because he saw what he was doing personally had affected the world negatively. So it's right now the reason I'm on this walk is that first I haven't I haven't actually done any walking for quite a while the peace march was many many years ago but it's just stunning and encouraging to me very pleasant to see these kids who are so so enthusiastic about something just as I was 40 some years ago we have to continue the concept that there are things individuals can do to change uh, to, to steer oh the direction that, the, that our culture is going in, that our world is going in. A science fiction author said, the easiest way to predict the future is to create it. Um, so people I would suggest looking up are Mahatma Gandhi, how he learned how truth and honesty was the, mo the strongest force in the universe. Buckminster Fuller, for the concept that we have enough resources and enough money and enough intelligence in the world for every single person in the world to make a reasonable living. He said that we should convert our weapon weaponry into livingry. So he pursued the concept in the last half of his life that the, the earth can survive, humans can survive. We can use our intelligence to to allocate our resources more adequately, more evenly, so that everybody everybody can live here.
So Janet, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're here today. Um, good morning. My name's Janet Coaster, and uh, I love long distance walking uh, for a cause. Uh, I walked uh, solo across the Russian Federation in 92 and 93 to raise awareness about the environmental crisis and what we as individuals can do to reverse that crisis. That was phase two of a global walk for a livable world. Phase one was in this country and we went from Santa Monica to New York and I organized a project that allowed eight Soviet citizens to participate. Uh, we spoke in schools and um, to different groups um, and it was just an opportunity to uh, interact with people and share what could be done on an individual level to uh, help reverse the environmental crisis. So there would be there would be some pretty uh, critical political scientists that would argue that um, walking and, and protesting gives the illusion of change, but doesn't really do anything. Uh, how would you respond to that? I have never really agreed with the idea of protesting. I think we have to work with people and help them uh, be willing to change in a direction that's positive. So my primary focus, because I am only one person, was focusing on what we can do on an individual level um, and educating people about that. Um, I personally, when I was on the Great Peace March, I did not participate in demonstrations or sit-ins or anything like that um, because in my own mind that's counterproductive. Um, so what I would do is I would walk and I would talk with people and share with people about what we can do. And when I was walking in the Russian Federation, there was um, the southern shore of Lake Baikal. There are two paper plants there. It's one of the great wonders of the world, and unfortunately that southern shore is getting polluted by the paper plants. And you have to look at the fact that that's the livelihood for whole communities, and how can you convert that into something that's environmentally stable, uh, sustainable. Mm. And I think that's the same thing with our whole military industrial complex. We need to look at economic conversion so that people's jobs and livelihoods are not threatened. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about that because that's what, um, <clears throat> you know, another major criticism is that, uh, you know, we need jobs and we need growth in this country. And so what does that, what does that balance look like to you? What does that ideal world look like of, of, um, of uh, you know, good economic security but then also uh, being, you know, being a, a, a sustainable society? In my mind, uh, we need to be much more spiritual about how we're approaching the world in general. And um, so there's very definitely a spiritual element. But if we are, if our beings are here to serve humankind, then if we look at what's going to really help the whole of humanity and focus on that, because there are a lot, and focus more on the inner gifts and talents of individuals rather than producing. Um, I think it was a, a great problem when our society, the U.S., switched from the gold standard to a production based standard because that just engenders the disposable society, you know, the throwaway society that we are experiencing now. You know, uh, things are disposable, people are disposable. Um, and that's really sort of, in my mind, off base. Uh, we need to uh, respect people, we need to respect the earth, we need to respect um, things. And when we engender those types of um, ideals and thoughts in people, uh, we can work together to create economies that actually support humanity rather than destroy it. Mm. Well, Janet, thank you for your time coming live from a side of a road in Iowa. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Let's go. All right. It's Sean Mahoney. Um, let's see. I'm doing the Peace Walk for a few different reasons. I grew up um, with a very eco-friendly family growing up. On a small farm, um, trying to live sustainably, so I've always been interested in kind of uh, 
kind of activism, kind of for the earth, I guess, what we're doing now, if you want to call it. Good. That. Um, also, I did it freshman year, and this was a really fun walk, and we had a good turnout, so I wanted to do it again. Great. Yeah. Do you have any ideas of things that you might do with, uh, in terms of your, your, how you live that might be more ecologically friendly than we've been doing, doing in the past? Um, well, when I'm older, if I can afford it, I would love to have um, to live off the grid with solar panels and try to get an electric car or something like that, but those are both very costly things. But those would be cool things that I'd want to look into. That's good. Have you seen Don Laughlin's energy efficient house? Um, no, I haven't. But you hooked up with Don, huh? Um, I don't remember who's Don. Oh, Don Laughlin. Uh, he used to be on the school committee, and he's a yearly oh, meeting yeah. guy. He comes out to school fairly often. I haven't really talked to him that much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>